Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey everybody, welcome to Growing in Grace. My name is Joel Brzezinski. Mike the Cap Kapler is with me. And we're going to uh, be getting uh, settled down here with some, I don't know, maybe some coffee or tea or whatever your drink of choice is and where you just sit down and enjoy. we got some donuts over there. Uh, Cap, you brought you brought some refreshments too, didn't you? Because we can't uh, invite all these people here and not have good refreshments. I've got a box of cigars. Ooh. <laughs> For the, before you turn us off, I've never had a cigar in my life. I'm joking. Forget about it. Well, I, do, I do know, though, that we have some cigar smokers in our listening audience. <laughs> and well, I don't doubt that. If that makes people want to turn this program off, then you hey. just... Cigar smokers, welcome to Growing in Grace. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know why we went off on that, but it was kind of fun. But um, yeah. yeah, we do uh, have some really good stuff, I hope, to talk about this week. Of course, in regards to the subject of grace. Yeah, and we're and... not just blowing smoke either. <laughs> I knew. I was waiting for that pun from you. I was waiting for you to do that one. <laughs> Okay, blowing I'm rings sorry. around people. Yeah, I I gotta say, I've just I've never had the desire to smoke, and and cigars would be included in that. <laughs> but some people like the smell of a good cigar. My grandpa used to smoke them. I, I know he wished he hadn't. He did end up with lung cancer, and he, you know, I I was there when he was dying, and he made his sister promise that she'd never smoke. Oh, again, and she stuck to it. She was very addicted to the stuff. So yeah, I got to fret my uh, mom's friend. Um, or my friend's mother is in the hospital right now as we speak uh, with some respiratory problems due to, in part, from smoking. So mm -hmm. we joke around about this stuff, but of course, we, you know. Yeah, you know, don't take us too seriously know. on it. I mean, you know, we like to have a little fun. It's all in, all in, uh, all in good nature here. But, but, uh, one thing we are very excited about is, is the, the grace of God and, and, uh, we like to keep our message here simple. If you've been listening to us for any length of time, if not, we've got a lot of podcasts for you to listen to at growingingrace.org. 400 plus podcasts over the last <laughs> eight years to listen to. The most recent ones are first. And, and, and so you know that when we get together like this, it's really, uh, we call it casual conversation. It's quite informal and unrehearsed. Just a couple of guys talking out this, this uh, amazing life that we have in Jesus Christ. And, and trying to purge out the religious stuff that has been taught over the years and even over the centuries that has diminished the finished work of Jesus Christ. And sometimes, um, you know, this stuff leaks over into our churches so that it's overflowing. I'm talking about the religious stuff that's not good for us. And so we're going to try and help separate you from that and uh, begin to walk in the, the abundance of his grace. Yeah, because it is for freedom. That Christ has set us free. Christ set us free. He set us free so that we could live in liberty, so that we could live in freedom. And if you're not experiencing freedom in Jesus Christ, then we encourage you to get to know God and his grace and his love and his goodness and his kindness even more and more and more, because he came to set us free so that we would experience that freedom. How silly would it, how, how silly is it that people are living in this thing known as Christianity or, or, you know, Christ in us and us in Christ, and yet we're not living like free people. And so that's what we hope to promote here on this program, uh, because God's grace is something that he does give us freely. And, and one of the things that we wanted to talk about this week is how the grace of God is something that he, indeed, he freely gives. Let's just work with that to start off with he freely gives grace not out of obligation it's not like he had in the beginning he thought well i got to i got to give away this grace i got to figure out i got to do this I, I i i just better do this i better give people grace no it's his nature his nature god is love and out of that love his grace flows 
not, again, not out of him having some obligation to give us grace, but he acts through his own nature. So it's not like we can sit here and try to figure out ways to get God to give us grace, but he has given us grace because that's who he is in his nature. Well, you used the word free and some variation of the word quite a bit there. And it's a big thing because that grace and freedom, there's there's a tie-in here that I think most of us have, have missed. This thing called freedom is so important. Mm-hmm. And I'll just throw out an opinion here that I think it's even more important than peace because I, I think freedom brings peace, not necessarily the other way around. A lot of people are trying to seek peace first and freedom never really comes. Mm-hmm. But because we've been justified freely by his grace, we have peace with God. I'm looking in 1 Corinthians 2, a verse that I used to use quite a bit in my early days of walking in grace, Joel, because it it fascinated me. We have received, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 2.12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Because you see, in the the spirit of the world, because of the way we've been taught and and brought up and the way this world system works in which we live in right now, uh, it basically says you you work to get. You know, you and I work jobs, Joel. We quit working those jobs. We're going to be getting hungry pretty soon. And so we, we work to get. That's the spirit of the world. I heard one preacher say many years ago that uh, money kind of makes this world go round. And to get that money, usually you work and then you receive it. Um, we haven't been given that spirit. Mm-hmm. We've been given the spirit that is from God. And this goes against the mindset of so much of what we've been taught about life in this world. Because this, this uh, spirit that we've been given, the spirit of God, has been given so that we might know the things that have been, what, freely given to us. It's the opposite of the spirit of the world that I was just referring to. Yes, it's it's so much, uh, so opposite. There's such a contrast. There's such a huge difference uh, between, you know, the the things that we, you know, we think we have to work, we do have to work for things according to the spirit of the world. But when it comes to God's grace, it's freely given. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing that we do to deserve it or to earn it or for him to give it to us. And grace, I think, is so much bigger than what we often make it out to be. I mean, we've done over 420 podcasts, and I, I imagine we haven't even, you know, hit the tip of the iceberg, really, when it comes to explaining God's grace and how big it really is. I uh, have a friend who just spent some time in Greece, and she was talking with uh, people, talking with some Greek people about the concept of the word that we know as grace, or charis in the Greek. Uh, that's how you say it in the Greek. And she was saying that, here's here's their take on it, is that the word was not a word to be bandied about. That's a Scottish word. I don't really... Uh, <laughs> but I think people will understand when, as I get further into this. Uh, but <laughs> I, it's not a word I use bandied about, but I, I know what it means. But it's reserved. Okay, here's the point. It's reserved for something utterly superlative in its joy, wonder, loveliness, and peacefulness. And she goes on that the word that we know as grace was a word expressing joy, loving kindness, and all those things in Bounty. It was not a word they used just to convey that one was happy, but that one was overflowing with joy. Not just that someone was extending favor to someone, but that one was expending extensive favor. It was a word of abundance. This word grace that God has freely given us is in abundance. It's not just that he's trying to show us that he's happy with us, but that he is exceedingly and abundantly happy with us and full of joy toward us. That's God's disposition toward us. That's grace. 
His love and grace is so much bigger than what we make it out to be. And again, tie that in with what we've been talking about here, that he gives it freely. It, it We can't even be, really begin to scratch the surface on how big and wonderful God's grace really is. Yeah, even <clears throat> there's a place in, in Colossians 3 where the word forgiving uh, is, is related to the word that you were just referring to there. Uh, with with cheris and uh, it's it's actually um, it's a root it's a root of the word cheris but translated forgiving or forgiven uh, in in Colossians three so we got this this giving forgiving type of grace that is has been poured out upon us willingly and freely by by God Himself to all people you know available to be received by all. And one thing I think that's important to point out here with, with this, Joel, is that there's nothing that you or I can do to cause this grace in our life. It's uncaused mm-hmm. uh, by those who receive it. There's nothing that, that triggers it. It's given to us. Now, I, I know a lot of emphasis sometimes is, is placed on us receiving, and I'm not saying there isn't a place for that. We we. You know, we, we come to faith, we believe, but even those things don't trigger God's grace. They were totally imparted to us in, in a way that required nothing, no kind of action in order to, to be the beneficiary of this. That's right. I mean, a lot of times in human relationships, we will try to... Um, initiate something that will cause somebody to show favor upon us. We'll try to get people, we'll try to do things to get people to show grace to us or to show favor toward us. You can't, we can't do that with God's grace because, as you said, it's not caused by us. God's grace is not caused by anything that we do. We can't pretty ourselves up for God. You know, we can't make ourselves look good enough to God for him to show us grace. We can't do enough works. We can't manipulate him. We can't do anything that would cause God to want to show us his abundant grace. It's not caused by us. It's caused by him and by him alone. Otherwise, it wouldn't be grace, right? I mean, that. That's the whole point. And so walk in this. It's, it's, a, it's available to us to, to live in every day and enjoy. It's, it's a beautiful place to be. It's like a Garden of Eden when we experience the, the abundance of grace that's been given to us. I think it's like creation. You know, we didn't cause creation to happen. We didn't cause our own lives to happen. God did it out of joy. Uh, he, he caused it. Out of nothing that we do. All we can do really is live in it. And I think that's a big part of what receiving His grace is. It's not like we are causing it to happen, but He's generously and freely given it to us. And so we simply, uh, our response is to receive it and to walk in it. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.